So don't pursue it like that in, um, as a reaction. Because as a reaction, you could say it's more of an excitement of the personality at the first sight of its freedom, as, as it remembers its freedom or its peace even. And the reaction to that, oh my God, I'm not affected by what I thought I was bound to. Ah, the bubble has popped. Any questions or shares here? Stephen? You've all met Stephen before? I'm sure. <laughs> if you've watched any other session but this one, and now also this one, you will know who Stephen is. Um, you don't talk about uh, the bliss very much, but I hear people all the time or hear being spoken about bliss, and it's not something that I recognize. When I... Um, like bliss state or things like that. So that gives me the idea that I'm on the wrong path. That I, because I can be um, what we just talked about, I can be there, but it doesn't turn into something like bliss. So what is bliss? And should you pursue it or can you leave it? There's so many ways, that's why I'm taking a moment, uh, there's so many ways to describe this, because th there's so many ways to access some form of bliss. There's countless ways to access some form of bliss. And I could just say, okay, bliss is the natural quality of being, of awareness, when it's not contracted into some condition or some sense of responsibility or some sense of limitation. It's the natural state of the creator, its own oneness. It's, it's that initial energy that emerges from the one, of it knowing itself and ex experiencing itself. So you could say it's all pervasive, it's your natural state and so forth. But the ways in which we access that experience can be more or less distorted. It can be very partial. Um, it can come through certain interpretations and so forth. So I'm just kind of trying, just seeing if I can sort of distill some of the main ways that we tend to access bliss and what the differences are. But then at the same time, I don't want to get too technical or intellectual with this. Should you pursue it, first of all? Well, I'm not here to tell you what you should desire, right? So whatever you desire is entirely yours to desire. Do you desire bliss? His name is Steven. Don't call him Mike. That's true. Okay, that will be my new name. Um, <laughs> We've given Steven a new spiritual name. Yeah. <laughs> Mike. Mike. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Risen M I C. Short for Michelangelo. Yeah. M I C. Yeah. Right. Um, it's not necessarily that I think I need to be in bliss or have to, that I but it's more like I would think it to be an indicator of Can uh, be. Uh, where where I'm at in a sense yeah. and in that sense uh, if bliss would mean uh, yeah then words get tricky also but uh, as an indicator yes but Bliss for bliss itself is not something I pursue. Cool. I think overall that's a fairly healthy approach. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, 
However, I would suggest you find in yourself where you do desire bliss, because it's essentially a desire for source. So that's why I say instead of fact checking things, start to bliss fact your approach, start to bliss fact your thoughts, start to bliss fact, uh, sorry, bliss check, right? <laughs> Not fact check, but bliss check uh, your thoughts and so forth. And you can use the emotional guidance system to them. And you could say the closer to sort of the peak of being aligned with the way that your true beingness is viewing things, if your view is in alignment with that, you're going to sort of be receptive to more and more of that energy, which you could call bliss. Um, however, often we could make a distinction between the bliss that is more like an excitement, that is a reaction to freedom in the moment from something you've thought yourself bound to prior. Because every time you have that moment of release, initially there's also the reaction to that with like, oh my God, I'm free, this is so amazing, it's so beautiful, I love light, oh my God, right? Is the personality going crazy over its own meditation? <laughs> you know? So it's like, oh my God, I'm blessed. And then if you try to pursue that, well, good luck, that's going to fuck you up. <laughs> so don't pursue it like that in, um, as a reaction. Because as a reaction, you could say it's more of an excitement of the personality at the first sight of its freedom, as, as it remembers it's freedom or it's peace even. And the reaction to that, oh my God, I'm not affected by what I thought I was bound to. Ah, the bubble has popped, ah. So yes, you might be accessing that deep bliss, which is timeless and peaceful as well as blissful. But the reaction to that, although perfect and beautiful and definitely an indicator that you're on the right track and that you've realized something truer than what you were realizing before. So it's definitely an indicator in that sense. But the sort of hyper bliss um, tends to happen as you move from, from a, a denser state of consciousness to a lighter, higher density state of consciousness. That transition of that causes, a, catalyzes a certain bliss that, that's m perhaps more expressive, you could say. It's an interpretation of the person. It's a delight at seeing its reward or seeing its freedom. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So that one kind of comes and goes because that depends on what shift you're making. And then the more you move your baseline up, the more that same level of freedom or emptiness or I'm not affected by anything or I'm not what I thought I was or starts to kind of like settle into sort of a very deep bliss, which we could somewhat call peace. It's like a, a deeper, peaceful bliss. Now you can still amp up if you, if you absorb more into that, that can again radiate into the, through the pores, if you will, with an energy that you could call maybe ecstatic. So we could also make a distinction between ecstasy and bliss. Ecstasy being the up-leveling of the body-mind's perspective. Excitement being the personality's reaction to that. But bliss is that which never leaves. It's that deep well of peace and Okayness, more than okayness, perfection, completion, that is deeply, peacefully blissful. Every time we kind of absorb more of ourselves into that, and or you could say we allow more of that to stream into this, there's ecstasy. There's like, you know, when you have a state where maybe, uh, I'm sure some of you have experienced it before, we're like, oh my God, there's so much bliss, I can't take it. You know, it's like, oh, it's too much. I feel like my body is about to explode. If you've ever had that experience, that's kind of the ecstasy of opening the channels to that deep background of, of intelligent energy, right? Yeah, Satchitananda, basically. Opening up to that existence, bliss intelligence. Also on sort of an energetic body level will fill you up. And that's sort of ecstasy. Whatever reaction you have to that with your personality would be excitement. All of which are great indicators. But you could say, okay, peace is the deepest. Um, ecstasy is the means to translate that into an upgraded energetic body or experience. And excitement is your personal response to that delivery. You know, deliver me from limitation, oh God. 
And then when you feel delivered from it, you feel liberated, you respond to it. You know, if you've been suffering for so many years, or maybe even just for a few months about a certain topic, or you've been in a certain bubble, and then the bubble pops, the channels open up, more of that bliss gets, more of that intelligent energy, which is basically what that true bliss is, gets channeled into the energy body. It starts to realign itself. It starts to open its channels. That feels like ecstatic, like your soul can breathe again. It feels great. It feels good. It feels nourishing. And then the way you respond to that with your thoughts and concepts based on how you felt before, you could say as a reaction of excitement to that bliss. Maybe that's kind of a somewhat simple way to still make some distinction in that. So then should you pursue bliss? Yes, in terms of, I recommend, you get to desire whatever you want to desire. It's not up to me. But I would suggest that we all truly do desire that bliss. Should you pursue it? No, but should you desire it? Yes, the desire is the path into it. An awareness of the desire for bliss is your gateway into that. Pursuing it is more of an external thing, typically. It's just a word, right? You could also say, yes, do pursue that bliss. But then by that, I would mean connect to the desire for that bliss, the wanting of it, and imagine already being it, already having it. Bridge the gap from not here yet to already fulfilled, using your faith, your imagination, your will. Should you want bliss? I think you all want bliss. I think everybody wants bliss. Should you pursue it? I wouldn't pursue it as a reaction, you know? But the reaction of excitement and the experience of ecstasy, when you're letting it in, when you're becoming more receptive to source, those are definitely great indicators that you are doing something right when it comes to aligning yourself to source. And therefore you'll become more of that bliss. And then if we want to take it really deep, I would quote or paraphrase Sri Anamale Swami, who is one of the students of Ramana Maharshi, who said something along the lines of, uh, continue to inquire, continue the practice of self-inquiry so that you don't get fooled by or lost in states of beauty and bliss and so forth, because you don't want to maintain, you don't want to be the experiencer of peace and bliss. You want to be the peace and the bliss. And you can only be the peace and the bliss if you dismantle the seeker or experiencer of the peace and the bliss. So if you always stay in the reactive state of the excited person when, oh my God, I had to even deeper meditation today. And oh my God, even deeper meditation today. And even more love and light. And this means this and that to me. And it's so special. If you stay in that, instead of that, you're lost in your personality again, in your storytelling mode. But if instead you turn it around and you inquire, well, who is this excited little rat? This little hamster in his hamster. Oh my God, bliss, bliss, bliss. After a while, it doesn't feel so blissful. It feels kind of exhausting. So if you inquire, like, who is this bitch? That's, <laughs> that's so childishly excited about, of course, by all means, be excited about bliss because it's wonderful. And it's, it is an indicator of progress in that sense. But, but Anamalai Swami said, continue the practice of self-inquiry. Don't stop. It's not just something you do 20 minutes a day. It should be something you do all the time. Because then you'll be that peace and bliss. And that's incomparable to being the experiencer of peace and bliss. Because if you're the experiencer of peace and bliss, it's always going to be temporary. It's always going to be up and down, up and down, left and right. You're going to come to interpretations about it. You're going to claim it as an identity. It's going to lead to different distortions. So what I mean when I say you take your personality with you all the way into the absolute. So continue to inquire, oh, who is this one that's claiming this state of bliss? And then you see, Ooh. and then the bliss becomes really peaceful, really deep. You, you start to really feel, oh, wait, I am that peace. I am that bliss. And the rest is assumption and thought. Does that answer your question? Mike? Mike. <laughs> Uh, yes, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and it helps the the distinction you made. Yeah, okay, because cool. there's for me a, a confusion. Uh, there was a confusion about what was what. Yeah, thank you. 